Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and I'm Bill Carroll. And uh, you may know me, hopefully, from either Feeling a Draft or Consensus Draft uh, Prospect Radio. Exactly. And today's episode, we're talking about Senior Bowl preview. Uh, we're going to be going through all the prospects that are going to be at the Senior Bowl. Uh, and just give you a general thoughts and opinions about them going into the game. Who are some guys that need to have a big performance? Who are some guys that don't really need to have a big, but just need to be there? Um, who are some guys that probably shouldn't have been invited as well? I might get into a little bit of that too. Um, but just general thoughts and consensus on all the guys that are there. And to start out, first position, the most important position according to most people, <laughs> the quarterback position, right? Because ladies love the quarterback position. Uh, Lots of good, I mean, there's lots of good quarterbacks at this uh, year's Senior Bowl. Uh, Baker Mayfield, of course, um, pretty much the top quarterback in college football this year. I mean, he, he really was, uh, just statistically speaking. Uh, then, of course, they have Brandon Silvers from Troy. Uh, kind of a local guy, too, from, uh, I think, Foley or he's Gut a, Shores. Yeah, he's, he's a... At he's least a, from a, my neck of the woods. Uh, yeah, he's from, a, I think he's a Foley kid. And, right. And he's one of those guys where he has a combination of physical ability... Mm -hmm. Local accessibility, right? But actually, some nice tape, also. Right, right, right. Yeah, he's 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 an interesting guy. Yeah, right. We'll get into a little bit. We'll get a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and then of course you have Josh Allen, <laughs> Wyoming, mm -hmm. who who's here as well, and, and we'll, we'll get into him. Uh, yes. And then of course we have uh, Kurt uh, Ben Kurt uh, from uh, Virginia, who I'm, I know you're probably. I've familiar. seen a fair amount of him. He was a guy that was a transfer. And they had a couple of quarterbacks ahead of him, and to his credit, he beat them out. Right. And some now some of those guys have transferred mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Kyle Laletta from Richmond. Yep. Uh, who I know you you're probably more Radner, PA than you. kid, uh, super hard worker, very smart, and I think people will be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, if they if they haven't already seen Kyle Laletta, I think they'll be pleasantly surprised at mm -hmm. what they find. Right. Huh? Of course, Luke Falk from Washington State. Yep. Uh, once again, our hearts go out to the Washington State community mm -hmm. uh, regarding, obviously, the, the recent tragedy with Tyler Helensky. But Luke Falk is very divisive. Not the most divisive quarterback prospect, but he's still a very divisive quarterback prospect. There are some people that still have him as their QB3 or 4, and some who, yeah. you know, consider him undraftable. Mm -hmm. But he's a guy that, once again, has a lot to prove. Yeah, yeah. Most, def most definitely. Uh, and then, of course, Mike White. From Western Kentucky, Florida uh, kid, kid from around, not too far from here. Not too far from here, yeah, yeah, from the Florida area, uh, at least Florida high schools, and of course uh, the late edition. Cause Very late. We would be talking about Mason. We want, we want to talk about Mason. Rudolph, we would like to, but instead we get Tanner Lee. Yes. Tanner Lee is another once again transfer. Right. Uh, another guy who began his career was at Tulane. Had some decent games, better than decent games mm -hmm. at Tulane. Took a pretty good beating, as Tulane quarterbacks are wont to do. Right, right. And then took his his talents to the beautiful shores of Nebraska. Yes. And mm -hmm. had some up and down, frankly, for that way of putting it, uh, production and some up and down tape. And surprisingly to me, decided to declare early, despite the fact that he wasn't exactly coming off the best performances of his right, life right. towards the end of his career at Nebraska. But... He is a big kid with a strong arm, and that is one of those things that sometimes is just enough to some people. Right, right, right. Now, out, out of this group of quarterbacks, uh, you know, because I do a lot of data work on the show. If you, any of you guys are familiar with the show, I do a lot of stat works, a lot of stuff like that. Uh, the quarterbacks that really stick out the most, statistically speaking, to at least become a long-term starter uh, or better, Baker Mayfield, of course, is pretty high up on that list in terms of FBS and high school production. All those things, check all the boxes. Uh, Mason Rudolph, who is not going to be here, but if he was here, he was another guy who checked all the boxes in terms of college production and high school production. Uh, Mike White, another guy, college production and uh, high school production, also checked all the boxes. Luke Falk, as well, college production, high school production. All those areas are pretty much uh, handled. Guys that aren't, uh, Kyle Oletta, I'll just put it like this. FCS production, I don't have the database yet to include all FCS guys, so he's just kind of a blank because of that. Uh, then, of course, you have Brandon Silvers from Troy. Don't quite have accurate high school data on him, although I am working on getting uh, his high school production. But his FBS production was really below average. I mean, that was the best year that he had 
and it was a 45.53 out of 100, which is not that impressive. Um, he is a guy that when you watch him on film, he has some tools. He has, you know, he has those types. Of, like, you watch him on film, you see some things here and there, but not necessarily amazing. Uh, Kurt, Ben Kurt had really good college production. I mean, FBS production, at least this year. Uh, and then, of course, the high school production is kind of unknown because I don't, I don't have accurate stuff on them. Josh Allen, on the other hand, 26 out of 100 college production score. And, yeah, and a 55.40 high school production score. Um, so, <laughs> not a great combination in terms of uh, data, which is why there's all the talk, for, like, stats are for losers, as Mel right. Kuyper put it. But if you add those two things together, you right. get slightly, you get okay production, if you add the two numbers together. Again. Right. If you add them together, you, you have a passing grade. So far, he's failing um, uh, in both um, categories. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's worse than an F. I, you know. I don't know if you can, like an FF or something. F minus. F minus, yeah. But that that's basically Josh Allen, production-wise. And, of course, film-wise, I've never been... I mean, he is physically talented, yeah. and he's big, and he's tall, and he's athletic, and he does some Aaron Rodgers things occasionally, but Aaron Rodgers doesn't throw a ton of interceptions. Aaron yep. Rodgers doesn't make dumb decisions throwing into triple coverage. Aaron Rodgers also can complete screen passes without them just hitting the dirt. Uh, or just flying everywhere. So it's, uh, but but to me, just in my, and I'll just kind of go over the quarterbacks that I really like at, at this one. Uh, you know, again, Baker Mayfield is probably the top guy for me in terms of the quarterbacks going into this game. Uh, like Luke Falk as well. And then the third guy is honestly a tie between Kurt and Mike White. So those would be kind of that, that tie. But those would be the three quarterbacks I'm really most looking for in terms of, you know, just how I like them on film and those other aspects. But what, what about you? What are your three uh, out of the group? I'm close to you. I have Loletta probably... At third? or Swap two. and paint with Luke Falk. Okay. Um, I like Josh Allen um, not as a quarterback to draft maybe not at all. But if you are convinced that you... You're just so convinced you have right. to have Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. That's a guy, in my mind, you take middle, day three, or mm -hmm. later. Right, right, right. Brandon Silvers is somewhat similar in that regard in that maybe very late day three, you know, in the seventh round, you throw a, 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 a pick his way in hopes that he beats the odds. Right. Uh, Binkert is a step above that. Uh... Lee is a step, you know, maybe it's around the same level, but maybe around, maybe slightly above that. Mm -hmm. Falk is a guy that people used to really enjoy. It used to be, I mean, there was a huge Falk contingent, and everyone fell out of love with him for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And though he's maybe not playing as well as he's played in other years, he showed me enough of everything to, in certain offenses, be an effective starter. Perhaps mm -hmm. he doesn't have a great arm. That's no. my main concern. Yeah. Is you know, if he's in a cold weather outdoor situation or things like that, he will struggle. But he's very tough. Like, well, like all Mike Leach quarterbacks, uh, you can't play quarterback with Mike Leach if you're not mentally and physically tough. And like I said, his real issue is, is the arm limitation. Mike White is a guy that has enough of everything. I think he and Laletta are kind of the same guy to a certain extent. It's just that more people have seen Mike White because he at least plays at... A, an FCF, uh, F, sorry, FBS school that goes pretty much every year to a bowl game. Right, right. And he was, he's been coached by people that are respected in the the trade, you know, especially amongst the sort of quarterback world. Um, I hope people will see more of Loletta and this will sort of open their eyes. And to me, obviously, Baker Mayfield is sort of head and shoulders above every other, right. other quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the other quarterbacks that people talk about, like Rosen and you know, and, and Lamar Jackson aren't here because they are true juniors. Right. So, you know, those guys are, are going to have to be evaluated separately from this process. And, yeah, it's kind of very unfortunate that we won't get to see Mason Rudolph in this environment because this would have been, once again, a great opportunity for him mm -hmm. to answer questions, both question questions and actual play questions about mm -hmm. things he knows, things he understands, what he's been asked to do in the system he plays. And he is in a system where they make throws down the field. You can't call it a dink and dunk offense. You can complain about it, things you don't like about it, but they throw the ball down the field in Oklahoma State. They have receivers who are jump ball receivers, guys who can run. 
So they throw the ball down the field to stress and stretch your defense, and they want to test just how athletic your corners are. And if your athletics, if your corners aren't athletic enough or fast enough or, you know, smart enough mm. to deal with some of the things they do, they'll, they'll do it over and over again. They'll throw four fades, you know, back to back to back against you if you keep showing you can't defend it. Right. Uh, they don't do a tremendous amount of complexity within certain things, right. but they have most of the concepts, though they may not combine them well, right, right. or once again, with a lot of complexity, but they right. have most of the passing concepts you'll be asked to execute. They do have, you know, the things that attack the underneath area, drags and, you know, shallow crosses and things like that. Right, right, right. They have sail routes. Once again, the aforementioned, you know, like nine routes, post routes, both sort of the skinny and well as the sort of traditional, you know, big bender post. And they'll even throw to the backs a little bit. Mm-hmm. I wish they would use their backs more in the passing game, mm-hmm. but they'll throw the occasional angle route, uh, sometimes the occasional, you know, um, uh, wheel route and things like that. Right, right. Okay. But he's a quarterback I wish was here. His right, season. right, right. Yeah, I, I wish he was here as well. Um, and, and, of course, there, and, of course, that is the quarterback group uh, for the most part. And in the next video, we're going to do the running back group. Uh, so, of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my other work at draftcoburn at wordpress.com. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics and... You can find my work either uh, at Nuts and Bolts Sports. I'll be putting a bunch of uh, Shrine Bowl things up there. And you can also find some things I'll be doing, obviously, on Twitter. I also have some videos that I've shot. I'll tweet some of that out and some pictures I've shot. I'll tweet some of that out. Uh, either at, if you're one of those kids who's sort of post-punk, uh, you know, more Green Day, you can go to at capital B, capital C, that's B C A double R O double L 138, B, B Carol 138. And if you're more, you know, Android and the Blockheads, uh, Sex Pistols, Early Clash, then you can find your way over to E L E V E N 11 Bravo, B R A V O 138, also on Twitter at 11 Bravo 138. Right. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, Go to it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Mash the like button right. hard, exactly. firmly. Exactly. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. Right. There's probably like a guy from the Jimmy Johns or whatever that would love this. That would love this. Maybe, you... But he doesn't know. Right. Because you have to let him know. You have to let him know. And hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I will talk to you guys in the next episode where we are going to talk about the running back position. Which is super which deep. Which is super deep this year and super deep at the Senior Bowl as well. So, with all that out of the way, peace.